okay so let's start first of all i want to ask you all have you all started practicing uh, typing for your cm2 papers any sums even if it's just one two sums a day have you all started practicing no okay is there anyone who has i don't think uh, is there anyone for whom cm2 is the first paper that they are giving online on ms word i don't think there will be anyone but maybe in case there's anyone please raise your hand if it's anyone first time giving a paper on ms word from iipo all right so that means most all of you are equipped with how the entire typing thing goes and the basics all of you know i'll just quickly go through them so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to show you all my own answer script from the september 2021 term for cm2 and uh, then after we have a look at it we'll get a hang of how the actual answers are answered and then we'll go through the guidance that has been given by the ifoa so that we know exactly what to do so of course as all of you know that we do not give our arns anymore on the uh, word file it is just in the name of the word file nowhere inside the word file you should mention your arn so the header and the footer will only con contain the name of the paper and the diet in which you are appearing for the exam after that uh, you have to start every answer on a new page i haven't uh, made my answer numbers in bold probably maybe because i was running short of time a little but i would suggest that if you all get the time or try at least to make it bold so of course it's very easy you just have to when you start typing just simply start by control b then type and then again press a control b to get rid of the uh, bold fonts so that's it that's all you have to do and the most important thing as i had said in the general class once you are done with the answer for example i was done over here now let's say i did not uh, i was not able to complete this differentiation let's say i left it for later on so i did my answer till here i wanted to move on to the next answer i will not press enter to go on to the next page i will simply click on insert and i will insert a blank page i will insert a blank page and then start my answer too so now what happens is even if i try to type something over here let's say i typed all this over here this answer 2 is stagnant it did not move on but suppose if i had pressed enter instead if i had pressed enter to move on to the next page it did an answer 2 as you can see it's started moving down as and when i start typing the lines it will go on moving down so at the end of the exam trust me you will have no time to change the formatting of the answer script at the end moment whatever has to be done has to be done as as and when you are writing the answers don't think at all especially for papers like cm2 cs2 cm1 cs1 maybe sometimes you might get a shorter paper but for the bigger papers if there's hardly any time left for you to change the formatting in the end and then in the end you will realize that all your paper has gone haywire so please make sure that you use this technique only to uh, start every answer again there is another option if you all want you can even increase the font size the shortcut for increasing the font size is control shift and the greater than sign and as soon as you are done either press the right arrow press the right arrow till you come to the next line what happens the difference between pressing the right arrow for coming to the next line and the different uh, and if you press enter for coming to the next line i'll just show it to you suppose i press enter 
what is happening i'm still uh continuing to work with the bigger font size or if i had suppose used bold also over here let's say and now if i press enter it is still coming as bold and in the bigger font size however if suppose i would have pressed the right arrow then i would have moved on to the next line without the bold and in my default font size which is 11 or 12 for which i have to which i have to use for writing the main answers so that's why what i would suggest is we do tend to press enter after writing the answer number i would suggest try to use the right arrow so that will save time for uh, making the font unbold as well as for reducing the font size because sometimes what happens is you start typing in flow and then after a point of time you realize that your font size is wrong or maybe you have you've been typing in bold so that's why to avoid such things try to use the right arrow that is one shortcut that i've learned over time apart from that cm2 is not a paper where a lot of mathematical typing is required it's more of a analysis based more of a commenting paper just very very few on mainly there's differentiation involved so you have to keep your differentiation typings very strong uh just for the for example in my term there was hardly any question from any of the stochastic models no brownian no log norm no hardly anything so that's why there we did not have to really use any greek letters um rest was okay. now for the um put and call for the derivatives usually the only complication in the typing is the superscripts and the subscripts so for the so just to use the superscript and the subscript you do not have to necessarily enter into the equation editor mode suppose i want to type out this equation and i i used the equation editor mode just for this portion as you all can see there's a slight change in the font size these are in normal fonts and this part is in italics and it's coming in a gray box also so what i prefer always is whenever i need to do any sort of mathematical typing even if it is just a simple subscript or a superscript it's my habit that i immediately enter into the equation editor mode for example let me just for the ct you'll see that for the ct i haven't used the equation editor mode it is not part of the equation what have i have done i have simply pressed control and equal to it automatically comes in the subscript again a reminder don't forget to non subscript it as soon as you are done typing everything in the subscript make sure you press control equal to again to come back to the normal alignment now for the greater than equal to sign of course there was one option of going to uh, insert or going first going into the equation editor mode and then inserting a symbol but of course it's easier to just use the keyboard at all times the minimal use of the cursor should be done in your exams that is the actual uh, power of typing or the actual skill of typing when you make minimal use of the cursor so that's why instead of again and again trying to use the ribbon try to do everything on the keyboard start practicing in that way and trust me in the exam you will not even realize it will automatically happen like that so now i know that in this portion i will have to use a lot of superscripts and subscripts simultaneously right so i do not like my uh, answer scripts to have a lot of underscores or a lot of hats and too many brackets so i always prefer typing in the equation editor mode if you all are comfortable uh typing without the equation editor for example this is how you would type without the equation editor This is how you would type without the equation editor. So of course you can see that it is a little more confusing 
to decipher or understand it in a second. But if you see this equation, then in a second, you will realize what exactly is the equation all about. So I always prefer it this way. But in case if you all have the ability <clears throat> to understand this one, then I would suggest that go for this one without the equation at all because of two reasons. Sometimes, especially in the IAI platform, I've heard that if you enter into the equation editor mode, your laptop may lag a little. So if you're comfortable with this, then go for it. And the other reason is that IFO has always given its specimen answers in the non-equation editor mode, which means this, uh, they've always used the standard keyboard notations. They've never penalized for using the equation editor, but that is what they have shown. So it's always obviously better to go by what they have shown until unless you're not at all comfortable then try to uh, then try to increase your speed and go for the equation editor at all times um i'm just seeing if there's any okay so like over here over here again i use the equation editor because i knew that i had to make use of greek symbols now once you use a beta or a sigma for cm2 this is the advantage that there are very limited Greek letters, number one. And number two is in a sum, if you are using any Greek letter, then the same Greek letter is going on repeating. So what you can do in that case is if you do not want to enter the equation editor mode again and again, you can just go to it once and you can just copy it. You press control C and then for the entire answer, for example, here if I copy this entire beta underscore b then over here i can just press control v instead of entering into the equation editor mode and then typing the entire thing right this is a very big advantage that's available for cm2 because here generally there are very few points where you have to actually take so much effort to type so many things So as you can see, it's mostly such a theoretical paper. There's hardly any mathematical typing involved. Here again, very, very, very important is the referencing that you have to give. It is, trust me, it is very important because if you do not give referencing, you might think that you know this and that's why you're writing it. No, if you're writing any full theoretical answer even an 80 percent or 70 percent theoretical answer where you are referring to the material please make sure that you put a referencing properly the cmp is the compiler pack the study material from the institute that we use and all your study materials you will see that at the bottom of the pages you have the year of publishing so i think either it's somewhere between 2019 to 2021 for everyone so the year, very important because the page numbers and the uh, order of paragraphs and everything changes as the publishing changes. The subject name, of course, chapter and page. Now, you might also give the para if there is one paragraph which you are strictly referring to or two, three paragraphs. You might give the paragraph number, but it is not mandatory. You can give it to be on the safe side, but it is not mandatory. So I would suggest that this much is more than enough. That is what I've always done for all the six papers. So this one's completely fine, but give it. Even if you think that you know it, just it will take you one minute. You know where the answer is. Go through the material very thoroughly before the exam so that you know, even if you're writing an answer, you know that this is where I can find it. All right. So give a referencing as much as possible. So suppose over here, here I did not think that I have the time to, here you can see I've been using the superscript so many times because this entire answer was full of superscripts. So what I did was, of course, it was not feasible to again and again go into the superscript mode. So it's fine. If for some answers, you feel that it is too tedious to go into the superscript mode or go into the subscript mode again and again, it's okay. There is no harm in writing in this form. 
All right, there's absolutely no harm, no penalizing for this. You have to realize that the main aim of the exam is obviously you have to give a decent looking paper to the examiner, but this does not mean that because of this, you miss out on your questions. It has to be decent looking. It does not have to be perfect looking. It is fine. Even the examiners know that this is not something very new for us. In fact, for the examiner's report also, I think I've downloaded the examiner's report. Yeah, the examiners were lenient with notation when marking these questions, but some candidates missed out on scoring full marks through not explaining their steps. So as you can see, even they are accepting that it is very natural for us to fumble a little with our notations and with our typing. But as long as you're explaining everything that you do, that is the most important thing because end of the day, that is all that matters. They are not here to check how well you type. No, that is not the aim of your exam. The aim is to see that if you have understood and given the exam without using unfair means, very important. So for that reason, you have to explain every single step that you make. Um, one more thing, final answer, always mention ANS so that they know that your answer has ended over here, especially for the mathematical answers. And if possible, try to make it bold. Try to make it bold if you remember that time or if you get the time. For every final answer, try to make it bold. All right. Uh, another thing for the CM2, CS2 papers, don't remove the proofing. I would suggest don't remove the proofing for any paper only, but especially for CM2, CS2, don't remove the proofing at all. It is not required for the theoretical papers. You They have to know that there are red lines because if you're removing the proofing, they might think that maybe you had too many mistakes or something or the other, jabki you were just trying to prove it, but to make it look neat. So there's no point in doing getting into all that. Don't waste your time. Because anyway, the proof you'll have to do within the exam time. Because uh, as all of you know by now, you cannot create the word file before you download your question paper. Only after downloading the paper, you can open MS Word and start typing your answer. And before submission, you have to close the word file. Don't submit it without closing the word, word file. Because suppose after submission, if you just by chance, by mistake, even if you just press a spacebar, automatically the time of last editing changes and it goes beyond the exam time. It might go beyond the exam time, right? So no point, just do it as it is. For the interest rates, this I2 is uh, actually this one. This is I, this I1 and this I2 for two interest rates. So even if it's not possible for you to write the subscripts, in such cases, you are allowed to write I and normally two. Even for the guidance that they had sent us or they had uploaded on their website, they did use this. For example, over here, if you were writing X and in the subscript IJ, you can either use the underscore or you can do away with the underscore in these cases and simply write X I G. All right, it's fine. It's completely acceptable. For the superscript, you cannot do it. Or maybe sometimes actually you can, for example, sigma square. All of us know that sigma two means sigma square. Right, so for the very general things, you can do it. For the very specific ones, try to avoid it. Just add an underscore, even if not the subscript. Again, referencing very important. Now for the distributions, it is up to you. You can either use the follow sign by going into the equation editor mode, or you can um, try using this one. Even though this one isn't completely a follow sign, but you can use this one at times if you do not want to go into the equation editor mode. Or the best part is if you are not using equation editor, 
simply write it just write it don't get into the uh, hassle of uh, trying to understand whether this one is acceptable or not just let it be all right just type follows instead of giving the symbol and of course in place of lambda you can use l in cm2 these are what we use mostly use alpha beta gamma delta for differentiation uh, and for the derivatives part and uh, lambda sigma that's it so for all of these you can use a b c for gamma try to use gamma always don't get to c y etc gamma is gamma uh, lambda ke liye you can use l sigma ke liye use sigma don't use s because you all also know for this sample population it's s square for the for the sample uh, standard uh, standard deviation is it's s and for the population standard deviation it's sigma so don't get into all that type sigma alpha beta a b is fine lambda l is fine but for gamma and sigma gamma and sigma all right for capital phi capital phi either you have to go all capital definitely first letter capital both are acceptable by ifoa to be on the safe side i would suggest all capital because it's clearer and uh, definitely first capital so obviously for a capital five for normal distribution uh this this sign the standing line for the condition and all for the given sign as we say it's uh, available just on top of your enter key you have to use shift along with the backward slash so you will get the standing line in case it wasn't visible to any of you apart from that make sure you know the names of all the signs uh, of all the greek symbols or greek letters because if you don't know then you can't write your answer and you can't find it on the equation edit also you will have to spend a lot of time even if you're not sure of any letter let's say for example with me i wasn't uh, one letter i could i don't remember which greek letter it was i just couldn't remember what was the name of that letter so make sure before the exam make it a point it will take you 10 minutes whatever greek letters are there in the entire study material or, or your entire notes open them and make sure you know the names for all of them in case you do not know the name for any of them then go to the show you go to the equation editor here you have the symbols all right you can go to the greek letters here you can see all of them if you get your arrow or your cursor to the greek letter you can see the name of the symbol over there all right which is actually the shortcut also for for the uh, typing we actually use the name of the symbol only with the backward slash so you can go and you can see all right this is one thing that please ensure you are do before the exam don't keep it for the exam if there is any greek letter that you ever come across which you are not sure of do it immediately so that is it for this paper is there any doubts or any question regarding the typing in this paper whatever you saw while i was scrolling anything that struck you is it clear yes ritik <coughs> is it is it important to uh, make uh, uh, type the dollar signs for the numeric values very important okay. thank you for reminding <clears throat> very important that uh, you make sure for all the amounts it has to be clear that you are typing an amount and not just a number even if not while working while working maybe for one two steps you skip it maybe it can happen but for the final answer 150% you have to type any unit not just the dollar sign in fact uh, i don't think all of them are dollars i think mostly ifoa papers they use euros so uh, for euro what you can do 
is you can go to the insert symbol you will have to go to the insert symbol or you can either write it three pounds or three gbp or three pence for us it's rupees but for, uh, for us it's paise for them it's pence for us it's rupees for them it is gbp or pounds all right the euro sign i'll just tell you i know the shortcut for mac but for windows i have to see the shortcut ones not happening i'll just get back to all of you in the next class regarding what's the shortcut for euros because i'm sure even for windows keyboards there must be some shortcut yes ritik uh, one more thing that uh, I, i have seen that you have showed uh, many steps in during the calculation like uh, can you can you open the exam ones sure hmm. just scroll up scroll up If you're talking about this sum, then this sum required me to show the entire working because that uh, it was actually a proof that I had to show. So obviously, for your definitely, <clears throat> are you talking about these? No, I saw one question where you have uh, where X was required. I think X was required. Just a second. This one. Yeah, uh, we can say that because you have uh, you have showed, I mean, all the working. So I think that uh, we can skip one or two lines in between. You can, you can. It's again completely dependent on your speed. I have shown as many steps as I would have shown while writing on paper, because that is how I practice. I did not want to leave any scope. I wanted to explain every single step. What you all can do is. uh you all might skip this step this step this step is skippable but i think i mean if any of you would do this i think you all would show these many steps maybe one step less but this much i'm sure you all would show as well what do you all think see the sum it's in so, front of you so in any case you faced in time crunch during the exam sorry you faced any time crunch because you are writing all these steps so i think um, not really a time crunch i think cm to paper i completed just in time like just 2 3 minutes earlier <clears throat> and i did go on adding i mean there were portions which are left uh, for later because i knew that obviously it is uh, for the sums i did not do this for the uh, theoretical answers some places where i felt that for example there was one question of i think uh, theta or something where we had to explain the entire working of theta as a so if, in that there was an entire partial differentiation proof that was there in the material but uh, that and while writing the answer i felt that it, i did not have the time to type such a big proof <clears throat> because obviously for partial differentiation all of you know there's a lot of typing involved so that is why uh, i did not do it here yeah, this one this proof this typing was requiring a lot of effort because again and again for theta i have to type and then i have to take care of the brackets so this entire part i left for once i marked it and i kept it for later that in case i finish early then this is something that i can add so first you do the most important things you keep marking everything that can be added to make it better and then in the end you can always act oh no it was this one this one this entire thing this entire proof i just written it 
uh, in theory and explained everything. But then I had the time, so I showed the entire proof numerically as well. So this is something all of you can do. And as for the working, I do have a habit of showing a lot of working. But then again, it is how I have practiced. So even if you all start practicing from now, it's December. You have three full months. Three and a half full months, in fact. You have three and a half full months to practice. And I'm sure if you all practice, even you will be able to show this much amount of working. And I have a habit of solving on paper, for, especially for the big algebraic sums. I first solve on paper and then I start typing it. Because if I just solve everything on typing, it is not practical. All of us are 100 times more equipped on paper pen than MS Word, no matter how much we practice. Right? Anything else? No, thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions up till now? We'll just quickly go through the guidance that they have given. It's a very small guidance. They've mostly uh, told us what kind of questions are likely to be. Uh, one very important thing, CM2 and CS2, they do not give MCQs. MCQs are mostly only for CM1 and CS1. They did say that they will give MCQs, but up till now, all the terms that have taken place online, they have never given any MCQs for CM2, CS2. So don't think that they will give MCQs. Well, obviously, in these two papers, there's hardly any hardcore typing. So that is why they usually do away with the MCQs. Um, they have used this paper. OK, so we'll just quickly go through this paper. I'll just open the answer script because right now we are not here for a class. So this is the answer script which which they expected when you were writing the exam on pen and paper. This is a September 2019 paper which was held offline. All right. So now what they have done is they have given us a guidance on how the same paper would be answered or would be uh, approached if it was given online. So the first answer, it doesn't really involve much typing. In fact, a similar question came last term also where we had to show the formulas for two, three measures of risk. So this one is as it is, you have to type exactly this much. If they ask you the formula for shortfall probability or for VAR or for any of the others, for standard deviation or for uh, semi-variance or down, whatever. But everything you have to show the entire thing, it has to be done as integration. A reminder for integration, there are multiple ways of writing it. You can either use INT. I would suggest that the first one is the easiest because it is more concise. The second one, I would strongly suggest you stay away from because right now you think that it's just two words, but in the entire paper, if you go two, 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 your entire paper will look very clumsy. So I would suggest go for the first option where in INT for the integral and then for the limits inside the brackets, you write the limit, you put a colon and then you simply write the function which has to be integrated. All right. So suppose let's try and write this once. Integrating from L to, again, INF, you can use for infinity. So L to minus infinity. What are we integrating? We are integrating Fx dx. Space. Similarly, for the for part three, integration from mu, again, if you want, if you're entering into the equation editor mode, you might as well type everything in equation editor. And if you're not entering, just go for any new my uh, comma minus infinity. What are we integrating? New minus x whole square x. I would strongly suggest putting another bracket outside the entire thing to show that you're integrating the full thing. All right. 
and a multiplication in the uh, and an asterisk in the middle. This is how you will type it on MS Word. This same formula. And of course, in the equation editor, it's nothing. INT underscore minus infinity to the power mu the equation editor obviously it will go this way all right so this is something that of uh, obviously will be the same ditto as it was offline and online all right question two part one of this question could be answered in word but students will have access so i think this will this was a theory question hmm these are the properties of the Brownian motion, standard Brownian motion. So, of course, it is comparatively far and likely that now you will get such a question, but obviously now you have your notes and it's an open book exam. So they will not give such questions, especially for four full marks. So it is something which you know you can avoid or maybe not avoid exactly, but you will not expect such a question. For part two, contain too much algebra to be answered in word. A multiple choice element which they never gave for CM2. So just forget about it. Or the question could cite the generic formulae and require candidates to state the key parameters or features. So what they can do with such questions. The question was, I think, uh, here. write down ITO's lemma for FTXT where F is a suitable function. So they just asked for the exact ITO's lemma's, ITO's lemma's uh, formula. What they can do is they can give you a function. And simply ask you that uh, what will be the value of what will be the coefficient of dt maybe. So you will have to do the calculation and you will have to arrive at whatever is inside the bracket. All right, they can modify the questions in these ways. And that is all. No other changes. In fact, trust me, they are still capable of giving the exact same question. They are very capable of giving the same exact question also. But they'll just increase it to two marks because of all the effort you are putting in for the typing. Question three could be answered in word, but there are a few Greek letters which can be written instead as sigma, or they can candidates can find Greek letters in the word insert symbol dialog if desired. Uh, okay, so this is trust me, this is not, nothing new. These questions will be as common as it was before it is just a log normal distribution question so i don't think there is any issue in typing these it's just one one symbol so not, not a very big thing question four i think is completely theory so here these type of questions for cm2 they are more common where they ask you to apply the knowledge rather than do sums and sums and sums which is more common in the other papers in cm2 there are very few sums that you will actually be solving and more things that you will be commenting on and analyzing question five again now very important thank god this came for the trees for the binomial trees how will you use the how will you show the binomial trees in your answer script just like you do it in excel you show the uh, when you all will do the classes for Excel binomial tree. I don't know if you already have. Just like that, you insert a table. You can just insert an arbitrary number of rows and columns. As shown in the general class, also I will repeat once again. As and when you will be requiring more rows and columns, how do you add? For adding more rows, just go on pressing tab. As in when you press tab, you will start getting more and more rows. For inserting columns, right click, insert, and you will get all options of inserting above, below, right, left rows, as well as columns. All right. So it is always better 
that you insert an arbitrary number of rows and columns. If you do not require, you can always delete it by pressing delete cells. So you will, you will, here you will get the option of deleting the entire row or the entire column, whatever is unutilized, you just delete it. And if you need extra, you can always insert it. All right. So this is how you will, suppose for this, you will require a three by three table. No, one, two, three, four, five. Five by three table. You will require a five by three table. All right. Again, this working is very important. Very, very important to show, especially since you're doing it online, there are higher chances of using unfair means. So it is very important that you, after every formula that you write, the next line has to be that for the exact parameters of the formula, you are putting in the values. It is very important that you show it. All right, so that they know that you are actually putting the value of delta in place of delta. You're actually putting the value of the payoff in place of the payoffs, all right? And the probabilities in place of the probabilities. Question six is again, I don't think any. This, this I just showed you in my answer script also, a similar thing where the entire call and put inequalities were typed. So you can also type it in the same way as I did it. Question seven. So question seven, of course, now if you have it online, you can just show, let's say suppose there are multiple covariance calculations or there are multiple uh, beta calculations. For example, over here, it is covariance of R1 comma Rm, then covariance of R2 comma Rm, R3 comma Rm. What you can do is you can show the entire working, meaning the, this entire thing, you can show for any one. And for the other two, you can just write similarly and you can write the value. It is not necessary that you type the entire thing all over again. It is not mandatory. It is something if you want to show the working, you can. But definitely for one, you have to show the entire thing. For the remaining, you can simply write the final values after solving it on your calculator. Uh, for the calculations, of course, you can use the calculator. For the binomial tree, especially, you can make use of Excel to do the calculations to go from one branch to the other. You can use Excel and then you can copy paste the table into your Word file. And just below the table, you can you do not have to mention that you have taken it from Excel. You can just explain any one branch, maybe, right, or any one. Uh, step you can explain how you arrived at the next one or the next value and then you're good to go that is all that is required in a binomial tree mm. just look at the other three questions This is a completely theoretical question, so no harm at all. See over here, they themselves, even for the offline exams, this is actually D with one in the subscript and two in the subscript. So even here, they have used D1 and D2. It is not necessary that you have to put it in the subscript or use an underscore. Some things are just understood. All right, so you have to obviously use your common sense while giving the exam as to where you have to explain and where you can do away with it. Very important that you explain the parameters. This goes irrespective of online and offline exams. If you are writing a very complicated formula with multiple variables, be sure that you are explaining each and every parameter or variable. Even if you do not use these extra words like is the for your J representing, even if not so much, definitely where RJ is equal to development factor for your J. 
even if this much you write it is fine it is not necessary that you have to give it as independent of the origin until and unless the question asks you specifically for explaining the formula if it is for explaining the formula then make sure that you write everything all the features all the characteristics of every parameter but if you're using the formula for a sum then for every variable that is new in that formula or that maybe you think is something a little different from what we usually use it as make sure that you explain it just after the formula all right i think i had done this for my um for the portfolio management question i think i had done it just Hmm. See, for example, over here, you can even use it in this way because if you are writing EB equal to 10%, in the question paper, it is already given that 10% is the expected return on portfolio B. So you can even use this method. And for things like R, if there is R, then in the brackets, you can write what the R represents. All right. And you can give the values of course if, if in the if in the question paper itself they've given beta value of one then obviously there is no need to explain what is beta because they're already giving you a value so you can just write beta is one as per the question development factors again you can use make use of excel if you want to calculate everything uh, for in, in fact, for, for this chapter as a whole, you will do it probably in some days. I don't think you all have done it yet. So uh, for this chapter, you can use Excel full-fledgedly. It's easier, faster. But make sure that you show the calculations properly. All right. Even if it's just for one year or for one uh, row, even if you explain the calculations, it is enough. As long as they know that you have done something knowingly and not just copied the table from somewhere else. All right. This one has absolutely no connection with MS Word. It is easily doable in MS Word. <clears throat> now see, this is the reason why we say a line gap of 2.5. Because as you can see, it's looking so clumsy like this. It is looking so clumsy. It looks as if you are doing so much. When in reality, it's hardly anything. It's just half 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 mark steps. All right. So make sure you space out your answers properly. There is proper gapping between subparts as well as between paragraphs and lines. In algebra, especially to make it look neat and uh, the examiner should be able to read it properly and not miss any step. If you write like this, it is very probable that the examiner might miss one full line. It is possible. That's why if you space it out properly, then you can at least avoid such problems. Right? So any other doubts? Anyone? Everything is clear up to your... Any particular topic, any particular topic in the syllabus for which you want me to maybe show two, three sums because you are a little hesitant about the typing, then we can even do that. Or what I would suggest is that all of you start practicing typing. Do two sums a day. Just solve any two sums while practicing. Any two sums you pick up and you solve it on MS Word. That's it. Just two sums a day is perfect enough. So you do that and in case you face any problems, you can definitely contact me or we can keep a class maybe after a month. Till then you all will be equipped with all the chapters also. You, are, you all will see what is the variety of typing that you have to get into. And then you all will also know what problems you are facing while typing. So maybe we can have a class, 
a little later regarding your personal doubts and maybe some touch-ups if possible. But apart from that, nothing else. So thank you all of you. All the best for your exams.